Hi there, and welcome to the UAE Tech Podcast. This podcast is an exploration on how technology is merging with government in the United Arab Emirates. But it's also a discussion on how, in a digital, borderless world, technology is shaping a discussion on the future of government itself. In this promo edition, we're really lucky to have the inimitable John McAfee help us launch the series. In America, the UK, and the Commonwealth, John is a household name. For our listeners in the Middle East, John is the mind behind the first ever commercial antivirus software, McAfee Antivirus, sold to Intel in 2011 in a deal valued at $7.68 billion. In the intervening years, McAfee has become known for a libertarian political position, in part driven by the possibilities of technology. His interests in cybersecurity, freedom from government interference, and network science have drawn him towards Bitcoin, the blockchain, and Satoshi Nakamoto's famous white paper, on a peer-to-peer electronic cash system. So again, this conversation is not UAE specific, but it does highlight two themes at the center of everything we're talking about. The first is how emerging technologies like cryptocurrency are breaking down national borders and established financial and political systems. The second is how governments themselves are responding to co-opt or merge with these very same technologies. From our offices in Amman, Jordan and Media City, Dubai, I'm your host, John Lillywhite, with Alba Weber Business. Do you realize what this world is compared to the world prior to digital technology? The ease of use the power that it gives us to communicate and cooperate. So that's what matters to me. Technology applied to people, but even the invention of digital technology and computing pales in comparison to what Satoshi dreamed and wrote down. The last time we spoke with McAfee was a year ago, in October 2017. He just returned from a conference in China where the government had taken heavy-handed steps to shut down on crypto, Bitcoin mining, and initial coin offerings. I asked him how things had changed and developed in the community over the past year. When I spoke last with you, it's been almost a year, the, um, uh, we did not have any outlook for distributed exchanges. Uh, and uh, even at this point, we have none. However, none that are actually truly functional. Let me correct myself. Um, but um, there are a number uh, of uh, companies, including Binance, that are working on distributed exchanges now. And I think by the middle of next year, we will have truly functional distributed exchanges. Mm-hmm. Now, in China, if you remember, I was originally scheduled to speak in Beijing. The conference was originally intended to be in Beijing. China, two weeks before, banned uh, ICOs. Um, uh, they banned uh, crypto. And uh, talking about it even would have risked all of our incarceration. So it was moved to Hong Kong. Mm. Um, the, um, and why? Because China and every country has the ability to shut down a centralized exchange. Why? Because it has to have a bunch of servers somewhere. It has to have offices. Uh, it has to have uh, a, a massive staff to manage the exchange. Uh, and therefore, we all in the crypto community were at the mercy of any government's decision to shut down an exchange. If they were all shut down, well, crypto would be shut down. Now, however, we have distributed exchanges on the horizon. There is no central office. There is no server. There are no staff. There is no owner. Um, It is simply peer-to-peer exchange, very complex, uh, that provides exactly the same functionality as distributed exchanges. When that arrives, there is no legislation, no law, no enforcement in the world that can shut down a distributed exchange or even know where it is because it the exchange will flow second by second uh, between tens of millions of users on smartphones, pads, laptops, desktops. Um, If you shut down even half of those people, which would be impossible, the exchange would continue to function. So 
what is happening is we are freeing ourselves from any potential control from governments. Now, governments, seeing the future, some, at least a few of the, the forward-thinking people within governments, are attempting to, to uh, sidetrack this by creating their own cryptocurrencies, by creating their own uh, blockchain facilities. It will do no good. If you have a choice of using a governmental currency that can be tracked, that is not anonymous or private, or using Monero, which provides the same functionality that any government can provide you, who, which are you going to choose? The people still have the power. If anything, McAfee's experience in China seems to have emboldened his belief that the regulation of the blockchain and crypto is futile. This means if you're living in a country where physical cash is still the currency of choice, then according to him, you might want to enjoy it while you still can. If you like carrying around a fiat money or paper money, please do so for as long as it lasts. <laughs> uh, but in, in 10 years, there will be none. Um, so we, I would recommend you stash at least half of it away so that when it's gone, uh, you can still carry it around. It will have no value, of course. Um, I, I hate to put it in such cynical terms, but, but unfortunately, the world is not going to have any choice, my friend. Because when cryptocurrency reaches its peak, which means virtually universal acceptance, everybody is going to have to do it. It's not, it's, it is not rocket science. In five minutes, you can learn and understand what cryptocurrency is and how to use it. So what does a cashless society feel like? At the same time as making the case that cryptocurrencies are inevitable, McAfee believes they are convenient too. The Middle East is known for its Western Union and international transfer outlets in malls and on side streets across the region as expatriate workers send remittances home to their families. But it seems that these two may become a thing of the past. Look at what is happening. And if you look at the way that we live, those of us who have bought cryptocurrency, lock, stock, and boom, it's not that we're any richer. It's not that we're any more powerful. Our lives are just so much easier. If I owed you money, my friend, I could right now, even while we're speaking on this phone, send you the money and, and, and Monero or Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin, anything I wanted in a second, in a, well, in 30 seconds, while I'm speaking to you on this phone and from this phone. The truth is, for McAfee, it's not really about convenience or speed or even utility. It's about something much bigger changing the economic and political systems that govern our lives. Imagine a world without tax and without government, certainly government as we know it, and you can begin to understand McAfee's attraction not simply for permissionless money, but for a permissionless society itself. If it is permissionless, it is free, is it not? I get to choose. Only myself and the person or persons that I am transacting with are involved. And why should anyone else be involved? You know, in this country, prior to 1860, we didn't have taxes. There were no taxes, yet the government managed to run. Please, look at what has happened. Taxation, which I believe is theft, especially of income, is the most onerous of all government inventions. In America, we have to work from three to four months every single year just to support the government. Four months. We don't get paid for those four months. Now, in reality, we do. It's all spread out. Four months of a year. A third to a quarter of a year working for a system which is oppressive and provides nothing of value, really, other than national defense. Um, and that's a ruse in most cases. So... Tell me that this is not economic freedom and economic freedom because the economy, money, the access to goods and services is the foundation of every society. If we have economic freedom, we have personal freedom. And if we have personal freedom, then, sir, we can create a new society because a free people have no limits. They have no restrictions, no overbearing power saying you may do this but not do that. No, we get to choose, my friend. We, the people, get to choose. This 
is why the blockchain is so powerful. The more we talk, the more it becomes clear that McAfee's interest in blockchain isn't really about profit or even return on investment. It's personal. It's emotional. I asked John when was it that he first discovered the technology, and what was it about Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper that spoke to him? 2014,、uh, and I was forced into it by my close friends、uh, who were heavy into technology. And you know, I was, I was 68 at the time, 67, 68.、Um, and、uh, you know, I, I, I don't do as much research now as as I used to. So my friends keep me on point. Okay, if, if I'm called constantly by my my friends within the technology who have their finger on the pulse to tell me things, and this is one of the things they said: read this paper, the white paper of Satoshi.、Um, I didn't want to do it. I said, "What's the point?" And the guy said, "Please God, you must." So I read it. I, I, it was it was an epiphany of the highest order. I reread it again, almost memorized it, and I saw instantly. This, for the first time in my life and in my career, and my career has been entirely in technology. For the first time, I saw a technology that could potentially bring the overwhelming, overburdening power of those in power, bring that power into the hands of the people where it frigging belongs, my friend. And that's what I've been working on ever since, and I will continue working on it until I take my last breath. And so it seems that behind a surface discussion on digital currencies, distributed networks, and permissionless financial transactions, what we're really talking about with McAfee is a vision and a philosophy of the future of the human condition itself. Are the changes we are witnessing much more than technical? Nothing appeals to me on a purely technical basis. Uh, my background is as a mathematician. Now, in mathematics, there are—we can call math a technology, if you don't mind.、Uh, in mathematics, there have been theorems or, or postulates for centuries about possibilities. One is a thing called the well ordering of the real line, which actually just occurred about 18 years ago. But they've been working on it for 200 years. It has no value. The understanding of that technology, while it's beautiful. And intricately beautiful. I mean, if, if you look at the world, mathematics is the world. The seeds of a sunflower are arranged in a precision predicted by mathematics. Our genes, that spiral, and everything within it is predicted by mathematics and explained by math. So it's beautiful. However, many of these theorems have no absolute、uh, practical value. So. While while that was interesting, it had no meaning. It's only technology that can be applied to the human condition, to the human problems, that matters, and that has always been my interest.、Uh, and while we have done miraculous things with digital technology, I was around when the first computer、uh, was developed. I worked on one of the first computers.、Um, Magical stuff that has changed our life. The fact that you and I are talking now, and you're in a different country, and we can hear each other, and if we wanted to, we could even see each other. Do you realize what this world is compared to the world prior to digital technology? The ease of use, the power that it gives us to communicate and cooperate. So that's what matters to me. Technology applied to people. But even the invention of digital technology and computing pales in comparison to what Satoshi dreamed and wrote down. This isn't simply about the future; it's about the past as well. If blockchain is a universal, immutable ledger of every transaction, a networked archive of everything we do, then the victors no longer control the narrative. The powerful no longer define history. And deception vanishes from the face of the earth. It's not so much "don't be evil" as there is no way for you to be evil. Suddenly, everything's out in the open. A technology that removes deception and lies from the human condition. Ultimately, let me ask you a question: History. What do we know about history for real?、Mm. We know only one thing: it is written by the conquerors. So we don't have a freaking clue what the truth is. 
What if the blockchain had been around at the time of Christ? I, I know that the ridiculousness of such things. Let's imagine. We would have a complete, accurate, inviolable account, unchangeable, of all of human history. Please, God, see the power of this. And that's the blockchain. Not cryptocurrency, just the blockchain. The blockchain is an immutable record of actuality, of reality, of what is really happening as defined by consensus. At the moment, it's happening. Please, can you imagine anything more powerful than this? Of course, McAfee's vision of a technology that literally embeds virtue within its code is a long way from the reputation of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a shady domain for dark money, illicit trading, and drugs. I asked McAfee about his work creating an alliance to fight corruption in the Bitcoin community. His response might not leave policymakers in particular that comfortable. Well, let's start with the word corrupt. What does it mean? Uh, in our country, uh, it's defined as dealings that are dishonest, using bribery and other deceptive methods to achieve a goal. So, I do not want any government to even think about trying to control this because, number one, they can't. I'm trying to sidestep uh, a war that the governments cannot win by just not having it. And I'm trying that by doing something from within. Now, we're not trying to create a regulatory agency. Hell no. We're trying to create an agency of truth where information that is true is provided to people. Like many of the exchanges, good God almighty, half the exchanges have to be run by criminal organizations. Now, I don't mind. For me, that's fine. I don't care what you want to do as a business for profit as long as you provide goods and services, honestly and sincerely, right? So who are they providing goods or services to? The crypto community. I mean, for example, the DeLorean. I don't know if you remember that automobile. It was in, it was in the movies, Back yeah. to the Future. Okay. Yeah. That, was, that was started by a gentleman named John DeLorean. Mm -hmm. He actually was producing a car to the best of his ability. Maybe it wasn't the best in the world, but he was honestly trying to provide a product at a reasonable price for people. Now, while he was doing that, he was funding drug operations, <laughs> drug uh, importation. That's fine. I have no problem with that. That does not mean that, that that man's product is in any way tainted. So, great, fund drug operations. That's your problem, not mine. But provide the goods and services that you say you're going to do. And so, in the crypto world, that's not happening. Many of the exchanges are taking people's money, keeping them for months. God knows what they're doing with it, and then giving it back with, with a major discount. Um, that, I'm sorry, I will not abide that. And that is what we're trying to stop. Because really, what are regulations all about? They're, they're an attempt to prevent the stupid from hurting themselves, are they not? Right. I mean, um, smart people, if you go on Twitter and someone says, send me a tenth of a Bitcoin and I'll send you a fool, and please God. Well, anybody with half a brain would laugh and move on. And yet people fall into this. I don't think we can protect those people. We cannot. We may be able to protect them by providing them the facts and publish everywhere. Listen, if you see this, it's not real. If you go ahead and, and do it, well, it's not my problem. So we know that the lofty idealists of the internet, from Sir Tim Berners-Lee to John Perry Barlow, the author of the Declaration of the Independence of Cyberspace, have expressed alarm in the past at the growing control exerted by private companies and governments over cyberspace. Won't the same thing happen to Bitcoin and the blockchain? How can governments work with these technologies at the same time as providing security? And as for McAfee, aren't his ideas also, at times, a little utopian? Yes, and, and I will tell you why. Um, you, you mentioned utopian ideas like the internet. Well, sir, it actually happened. I would not call that utopian. Um, and you may think that my ideas are utopian, but while I am speaking, they are manifesting themselves slowly, but actually and in the real world. Um, governments are going to have to accept And By the way, you mentioned what about people who do money laundering and so on. Please, God, 
We're not going to stop that. We're not going to get rid of criminals. There will always be the exact percentage of criminals in the world, no matter what currency we use. No, what I'm talking about are transactions that governments have no business looking at, like in Dubai, they're looking closely at those transactions. Well, I'm sorry, they better get used to not being able to. People using Monero, I'm sorry, you will never find them, you will never know who they are, you will never know what they spent their money on, you will know nothing. Governments must get used to this. Stop this nonsense of, well, I'm going to create my own and you'll like it better, bullshit, or I'll create my own and make you use it, can't do it. Sir, governments are just about to collapse unless they understand one thing. You've got to find another way to collect money because you're not going to do it through taxation. Even if we accept that technology represents the impending and mathematically inevitable collapse of not simply government as we know it, but government as a concept and as an idea in and of itself, what happens next? Who are we? And where are we going? In America, at the, at the turn of the century, um, people had to get used to the idea that even though they loved their horses, named them, treated them well, sometimes slept with them, um, when the automobile came along, it didn't matter, sir. It didn't matter what your personal feelings were. The reality of the world around you made the horse obsolete for anything other than entertainment and amusement. This is just a fact of life. So it doesn't matter that the kids have gotten used to banks. There will be no banks, my friend. There will not be a centralized function of anything other than natural, national defense, perhaps, building of roads, maybe schools, but it will be minimalistic. Why do we need government when we have economic freedom and a system in which it is nearly impossible to deceive or to lie? Please, God, work this through. Where we are now is we've got a bud coming out of the ground with two green leaves. All plants start that. Watch how it changes. This little bud out of the ground is like nothing you have ever seen, and as it grows, it will be a tree of such magnificence that it will boggle your mind. It all sounds great. There's just one slight problem. Goldman Sachs. What happens when the immune system of global finance kicks in and when the masters of the universe start fighting back? Of course they are. But what weapon will they have? Do you understand they have no weapon to fight this with? If the U.S. were to invade the Amazon jungle, tell me, what possible strategy could those tribes who have existed for thousands of years have that would be of any effect? The blockchain is the most powerful technology ever created. The beauty of it is it cannot ever be co-opted by any central power. It is impossible in the inherent mechanism of the blockchain this is its power this is what woke me up this was something like a good god almighty if the people have this weapon all of us nuclear weapons aren't going to match it no weapon will match it because it is a technology that takes all economic power all economic power and distributes it to the people and if you have the economic power you have all the power. Finally, what about entrepreneurs building Bitcoin wallets or blockchain applications in the UAE and beyond? I asked McAfee if he thinks that they're aware of the global social changes and the economic opportunities inherent in these technologies. I think few are aware of it, sir. Uh, certainly the, the giants of the industry, Ji Hong Wu, Roger Bear, these people certainly understand it, no matter how much they are disliked. They have a full grasp of the implications. So, no, few are, but more have to understand what they're doing. People are doing this to make money. Well, of course, we should all make money. But in this process, the greatest of the entrepreneurs in the future will be the ones that today saw the truth of what the blockchain is in terms of social change. And what they develop will be the Microsofts, the IBMs, the General Motors, the Siemens of the future.